Rules of the Association, the boxing commissions that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, I want to go over the four points that the judges are going to use to score each individual round. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean punching. Jim. All right, Harold, and now let's get ready for a closer look at the competitors already in the ring with HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And first, the heavy favorite, Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko won the gold medal in Atlanta in the super heavyweight division <coughs> at the age of 20. Since we last saw him, he's garnered his Ph.D. in physical education, studying 14 to 18-year-olds' training methods, and he's played chess against the great chess master, Kasparov, Gary Kasparov, to round out his uh, his Greek ideal of a sound body and sound mind. Emmanuel Stewart, will Klitschko have to box tonight, or is this bombs away from the beginning? I think it's going to be a technical fight in the beginning. Uh, both guys have indicated that they intend to fight a skillful fight. I hope that somewhere along the line, someone decides to open up a little bit more to try to take a more decisive edge. But in the beginning, I expect it to be technical. And a closer look at the man across the ring from Klitschko, Las Vegas native Charles Shuford. Shuford was a tight end at a junior college in California, but his transition to boxing was natural because his father and two uncles both were professional fighters. His father is his trainer. As well as that, he's a good actor because he's playing George Foreman in a new a movie about Muhammad Ali, and he is anything but a foreman in the ring. But Will Smith, who does play Ali in that uh, movie, is in the ring with him. And Manny, maybe Shuford should try to play foreman in the fight. Well, you know, he looks like if he hasn't changed his hairstyle since the movie, evidently, I thought I was looking at George Foreman. I think that in order for him to win, he may have to change up from his boxing techniques, which are very good. He comes from a very good boxing family. His uncles, I know, were all good fighters. And I think he has a good corner. He has a good, solid, professional corner, and that's going to give him a good chance in this fight. As you watch tonight's telecast, you can log on to HBO.com slash boxing, where you'll find our boxing alert newsletter, keeping you up to date with the latest boxing news, fight announcements, schedules, and more. And don't forget to check out our Where Are They Now series. Our current installment features former lightweight champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini trying to make a career in Hollywood. Hurry home early, hurry on home. Boom Boom Mancini's fighting Bobby Chacon. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas and World Championship Boxing. Brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated in association with the undisputed king of beer, Budweiser. This contest is presented in association with the Universum Box Promotion and Cedric Kushner Promotions. It is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem. The three judges assigned to ringside for this bout will be Mike Liena, Bill Graham, and Patricia Jarman Manning. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Kenny Bayless. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed with white. He stands six feet three inches and weighs 234 pounds. His professional record, 17 victories, including nine knockouts with only one defeat. From right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, here is the challenger, Charles Schubert. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trimmed with gold. He stands six feet, five inches and weighs 241 pounds. He captured Olympic gold and now as a professional, he has 36 victories in 37 bouts, including 33 knockouts and only one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, from Kiev, Ukraine, presenting 
the reigning and defending WBO World Heavyweight Champion, the Steel Hammer, Dr. Vladimir Klitschko. Okay, just one second. Just one. Okay, fellas. Trunks are a little high here. Any punch in this area, any punch in this area is considered a legal punch. Anything below would be illegal. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you. Keep the fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. Klitschko, who is regarded as the best young heavyweight in the world, is coming off devastating wins over a pure boxer, Chris Bird, and a pure brawler, Derek Jefferson. Shuford is a big, strong boxer. So a well-rounded test for Klitschko as Klitschko and his German trainer, Fritz Sedunek, try to prepare him for the title shot that now seems inevitable, barring a major upset. We'll see if Schubert early will try to match Klitschko jab for jab. Right now, Schubert staying back, and Vladimir just sort of measuring the distance. told us he wanted to test Klitschko early to see if he could keep up with his speed. Klitschko is not necessarily a speed fighter. He's a very technical fighter, very patient, and as a result of the only loss he had where he expended himself so early, he became even probably more concerned to make sure he doesn't burn himself out. Klitschko's only loss in a fight at the end of 1996 against American veteran Ross Purity, fighting in his hometown of Kiev, perhaps overexcited. He ran out of gas in the 10th and 11th rounds of a fight in which he had been leading all the way. And ultimately, the fight was stopped in the 11th when Klitschko's trainer jumped into the ring to ask the referee to call it to a halt. He lost a lot of credibility that night. He's earned a lot of it back over the course of the intervening four and a half years. Relatively slow first round here as Schuford is so far unwilling to engage Klitschko and now he steps forward and fires a combination. But Schuford went wide and low with that left hook to the body. If he does that a few more times, Vladimir will try to fire a right hand. Vladimir right now is looking for a right hand. It's he said his favorite fighter was Max Mellon, and he fights to some degree like him, like many of the European heavyweights. Basically probing with the left hand, always looking for opening for the beautiful right hand that he has. Schumann is going to have to start punching back a little bit more, even if it's just a jab to get more respect. Otherwise, if Crisco keeps shooting those power shots, sooner or later he's got to start landing, just playing the numbers game. Schubert fainting now. Fainting with his hands and with his head. Trying to get Klitschko to follow the motion. Vladimir sticking the jab. And a tactical round one comes to a close. When we go to Vladimir's corner, where they speak German, one of the five languages Vladimir Klitschko speaks, our interpreter is Jens Holling. That's just right. I tell you when to go. A little more. Provoke him a little more. Then you go right. That's very important. Drink a little bit. No more faces. No more jail, no more things. You understand? And stay focused. You gotta, hit, you gotta look to hit him a little more. You know what I mean? You sell him? 
down the door nice. Don't give him no rounds, you hear me? Don't give him no rounds. You're all right. You're okay. Stay focused. Stay focused. He can't touch you. He never touch you. Turn it out. Come on. Round one saw very low connect percentages for both fighters by CompuBox numbers. Klitschko landing only six of 46 jabs. Schufer throwing 21 jabs and landing only one of them. Vladimir by far the aggressor in the round. That's why Harold Letterman called him the winner of round one. But I make it a point to notice that the best punch of the round was the last two punches of the round, which were solid jabs by Klitschko. And if he keeps jabbing and fighting his range with the jab, you can pretty much expect the right hand to follow through pretty soon. Schubert trying to get to the body with the left hook. You heard his corner. His father, Charles Schubert Sr., asking him for more fainting, more movement. He's not moving much, and the left jab is going to be the big factor, I think, as the fight progresses. So this, the jab coming from Pisco. His jab is landing with beautiful force and power. Vladimir missing with the right hand there. Difference in strength between the two fighters seems evident. Yes. Schubert needs to use his quickness. And Schubert is very much aware, seem to be conscientious of the strength difference. But he's not using his footwork too much. There's a hard right hand. It's just and that's, that. You know, you just saw that coming. <laughs> I mean, you just saw that coming. As yeah. soon as he could land the right hand, yeah. Schubert was going down. He was preoccupied with watching for the jab. Okay? He never saw the right Come hand. Come to me. Give me your glove. So now let's see if Vladimir can finish an opponent who has gone down once, doesn't seem to be all that groggy, and has his legs underneath it. Schubert moving more on his feet now. Slip for Vladimir, and when we see a big man go down like that, having watched Michael Grant, we worry about a knee injury. Klitschko seems to be sound as he gets up. Now it's Klitschko who faints with the right hand. Yes, Klitschko doesn't shoot many left hooks like most of the European fighters. He's primarily looking for that one big shot with the right hand. And his left hand is just a jab or a maneuver punch just to move you around. He's looking for that one big right hand. Lands another right hand. This one with not as much force as the first one. Schubert kind of saw it coming. Very good. Stay calm. Left, right. Not too much power. A little shorter. You did good. Charles Schufert, senior, the trainer, says that big guys like Klitschko are just strong, that's all. But you can see how quick and straight that right hand was. It wasn't just strong, it was quick. It was an athletic quickness that reached Schufert. And you're probably going to see more of those right hands as the fight progresses. But I do think he has a left hand, and if Schufert gets in close sometimes because he has to be more aggressive, I think he'll also see the left hand, Emmanuel. At this stage right now, everything seems to be going Klitschko's way. And I may be wrong, but psychologically, I think Schufer right now is starting to give a little bit more. Yeah, he just, yeah, he doesn't seem look comfortable given. in the fight. No. doesn't look like he's found anything that he thinks he can do. He looks as though he's just sort of waiting in there and hoping to avoid the worst as Klitschko tries to size him up and find the range. Good right hand to the body that time by Klitschko. Yeah, that's that's a good hand. And 
That's the second knockdown of the fight as once again, Vladimir explodes a right hand Five, off the cheekbone six, of Super. Yeah, that, seven, that's not a punch eight, you okay? of strength. A beautiful right hand. That's just a beautiful, beautiful straight right, right hand by a big man. He has the quickness, ladies and gentlemen. He has the athletic talent. This is no Eastern European stiff. This is a big, athletic, quick cat who is learning with every fight and who has power, Good speed, job. commitment, and a huge desire to become the heavyweight champion of the world. This jab is beautiful. It's very straight, very stiff, and it's got Schufer so preoccupied trying to watch the jab that he can't watch the right hand, which he's trying to watch also. Let's go showing patience. He'd like to do more damage, but he's not going to take an unnecessary chance stalking a 230-pound fighter. Cuts the ring off. Relentless aggression under control. You see all that experience for those great amateur fights that he had. And you must forget this man won the heavyweight championship in the Olympics. Something that very few fighters other than Cubans have did in the last 15 or 20 years. Well, Lennox Lewis won a gold, and he was the last top fighter that won a gold. And that was 1988. Made, and we're probably looking at the next one. Of course, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, and George Foreman all won Olympic gold medals. Long time ago. There he's looking for the little left hook as Klitschko is... Schubert ducked away, obviously concerned about the right hand, so now Litschko begins to fire the occasional left hook. Schubert landing in single digits, not taking many chances and throwing much. Vladimir trying to land one more big right hand in the crowd. And Oz, just as they would, a Sammy Sosa missed cut on a 3-1 fastball. Yeah, but it's still all Crisco right now. Matter of time. Just a matter, matter of time. Of time. Like that, man. You never get hit with right hand. Just get off the road and keep your hands up high, okay? And step away from those body shots. You got legs, man. Step away from them. This guy got to be. You just did him very good. Stay calm. Deep breathe. You're doing very good. Here's a look at Klitschko again in that right, which looked like it landed on the heart region, a straight right hand, fakes the left, fires the right. The beautiful right hand, too. Off the cheekbone. Boom. You can't throw a straighter right hand than that. When his father asks his son, why, why do you, you don't get hit with right hands, that's obviously because he hasn't seen one like this. Or perhaps we should say he... You know, I think even Lennox Lewis loops his right hand a little bit more than Klitschko. The Pretty right, close call. The, the right hand that Klitschko is shooting is one of the best right hands that I've ever saw, not just today, probably in the history of boxing. He hasn't been that good before this fight. <laughs> Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 25, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, I think the key to this fight is every time Charles Schufert stops and stands right in front of that big guy, he gets murdered. Just watch Schufert's feet. The minute he stops, he gets nailed, and it's all there is to it. Can't stand in front of him because the guy hits too hard. Right, right. Step back clean, fellas. There we go. Litschko sticking the jab right into the middle of Schubert's face. Schubert backs off and creates distance again. Litschko sticks him with the jab two more times. And krisko has got such a good jab. It's an offbeat jab. He's moving his body rhythm at one speed, and then he's punching the jab off at a different speed, and it's making it very difficult for Schubert to time it. Because he's moving so smooth and so gracefully, and the jab comes off at a whole different rhythm. Super dives inside and tries to get to Klitschko's body. Vladimir ties him up, goes back to looking for a big right hand. Klitschko oh, 
just missing with a left hook there. Blocking Schubert's left with his right elbow. He's blocking the punches, but still always maintaining good balance and good position. So even after he finishes up blocking the punches, he's able to retaliate right away if he wants to either to regain that chase momentum that he set. Lest you ever confuse the younger Klitschko with his older brother Vitaly. When you see Vitaly in the ring, he's even bigger than brother Vladimir. But what he lacks is the athletic deftness. He's just not as nifty on his feet. You don't feel that loose, cat-like quickness, the ability to respond to a situation that Vladimir so clearly has. August 14. Catch the next edition of Real Sports with Brian Gumble among the stories. So you think golf requires concentration? Imagine playing around without the benefit of your sight. That'll be August 14 here on HBO. Real Sports. Nothing is out of bounds. You do first the right and then the middle. Don't do too much with the left. You're doing very good. He hurt. You know what I mean? You got to put a hurt on this guy. The ball on right hand is there for you because he's coming in hard. You got to win these style. You got him sucking, sucking him in to come in hard. You got it with the ball on right. Hand. Don't throw it right up a couple quick. You're going to hit across the top with a hook out the wild. You know what I mean? Lottery box numbers. Go ahead. I was just about to say, Jim, that there was a lot of pre-fight talk about some of the fouling that the Shuperts felt that uh, Klitschko occasionally did, or maybe more than occasionally in their view. But it's not the illegal blows that have hurt them. It's the legal ones. By and large, he hasn't been close enough to Schubert to foul him. Schubert has stayed at distance for the most part, with the exception of the occasions when he got close enough for Klitschko to knock him down with two right hands. Well, the odd thing was we asked him, since he had portrayed George Foreman in the Ali movie, could he ever do that? And they said yes, but they were concerned with getting hit with an elbow. I don't know of a strategy that was ever devised because you were concerned about getting hit with a foul. Well, you heard Charles Schubert Sr. telling his son, you're going to have to hurt the guy at some point. It's amazing. I'm looking at Schubert, who's about 10 pounds bigger than George Foreman was when George was at his destructive power. Well, even more than that. And, and yeah, and still, he looks like a baby almost mm -hmm. to some degree compared to today's big super heavyweights. Yeah, exactly. This is the way the division has gone. Yeah. Vladimir Klitschko defines the body type that you have to have now to compete at the top of the heavyweight division by and large. Although, of course, yeah. Rachman is about <laughs> super size. You, you took the thought right out of my head, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what, Schubert weighed in at 237, didn't he? And I believe Rockman weighed in at 237 in South Africa. this thing has deteriorated badly because uh, Schubert seems to be satisfied to survive each round and Klitschko is not interested in taking any unwarranted chances being thoroughly in control of the fight as he is. 
Pisco is, I don't think, afraid at all of Shufford. I don't even see that much of a danger, but still, nevertheless, he's content to win the fight at this stage the way he's winning it. Yeah, why chase? Yeah. You know, you're well ahead, and the other guy just wants to stay away. Meanwhile, still to come tonight, a 122-pound fight in which neither fighter is expected to give any quarter. Holy Ayala from Fort Worth, Texas. Two-time winner over Johnny Tapia, moving up from 118 to 122, coming off a long amateur career and a successful, decorated professional career to take on Bones Adams, who had a long amateur career himself before leaving it, believe it or not, to become a professional at age 15 and has been a pro for a dozen years now. Tonight gets his biggest paycheck and potentially his crowning achievement as he gets to take on a big name opponent in Ayala. Round six of a scheduled 12. It looks as though Schuford is, is break, coming break. out him up. and uh, trying to get engage Klitschko. We'll see how many chances he takes, whether he's willing to throw more than one punch at a time or whether he's going to be satisfied to survive. CompuBox numbers are desultory so far. Klitschko landed 12 punches in round five. Schuford, by CompuBox count, has landed 12 punches in the fight. This is a stage where the experience starts showing. And I mean, sometimes one guy may be doing good, but still I think his mental concentration is not going to be as good as a fighter with the experience going down the stretch. And in this case, you'd have to favor Pisco because I think as Schufert goes on, it's a good possibility that he may get tired, Break. lose his concentration and his focus. Well, Vladimir's had more than twice as many pro fights. As well as a brilliant amateur career also. That's right. So his concentration, I think, as I call mental and psychological energy, is probably going to be a big factor going down the stretch of these last few rounds. And the way he's shooting those right hands, Schufert has got to stay alert all the time. He cannot afford to relax for one second. Vladimir tried a left hand. Schubert had a couple of chances to whack him to the bottom. Crowd boos because they want something more in the way of action. Schubert's not terribly interested in suicide, so he's going to continue backing away and trying to keep some distance between himself and Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko is getting closer and closer and closer. Though. Break, break. Just missed over the top with that right hand. The two times he's managed to connect solidly with the right hand, Schubert has gone down. Break, very, very hard to break, connect break, solid there because break, Schubert's break, mind is primarily about 90% on defense. And therefore, it's very difficult to land a clean punch. Well, after you get knocked down a couple of times <laughs> by right hands you didn't see, voluntarily or not, you know, the instinct for survival steps in and you take fewer and fewer chances. Self-preservation, it's called. Shoot for the tiny bit friskier in round six. And oh let's go left hook. So much for the left hook that I say it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> left hook inside and Charles yeah. has a headache. As he gets up at the count of seven and wobbles, and Kenny Bayless has seen it up. When I tell you about the left hook that I said it didn't exist. An American weapon, the quick left yes. hook. And Vladimir Klitschko waited and waited and waited for the right hand and finally said, all right, look, if you're not going to let me land the right hand, I will just have to knock you out with the left hook. I've got no choice. And it was a great left hook, too. <laughs> so another feather in the cap of emerging heavyweight superstar Vladimir Klitschko. His 37th victory against a single loss. Another knockout to go with a long string of them. Another impressive performance.
to go with the domination of Bird and the quick KO of Jefferson in his last two fights. This time against a tactical fighter, wanted to wait and stay away from him. Klitschko was patient, finally found his opportunity to land a fight-ending punch and did so at close range. He was getting closer, leaning in, he was getting closer and closer to body contact. And Schubert was so conscious of the right hand, but let's take a look at this left hook that finished the thing. Here you go, Manny. It's a great left hook. Didn't need much and, room. And then a short hook, too. Yeah, didn't need a lot of room no, no, for that. No, no. Just kind of body Schubert off. Perfect left hook. And crunches him with the left oh, yeah. hook. And when Schubert got up, he was wobbling back and forth. And Kenny Bayless said, why do I want to send you out against this guy for any more punishment? if you're not ready to stand on your feet. And it's really impressive that a guy to be that tall to land such a short punch. Yeah, it comes from balance and technique. Body him off, boom. And experience. So Vladimir keeps getting better, doesn't he? I was very impressed tonight. I thought he fought a good fight. He kept good balance. Totally in control at all times. Good left jab good right hand and a good left hook. Larry Merchant stands by in the ring. Uh, first, let's go to Michael Buffer for the official announcement on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 55 seconds of round number 6. The winner by knockout victory and still the reigning WBO World Heavyweight Champion, the Steel Hammer, Dr. Vladimir Klitschko. So, the doctor of heavyweight contenders, recent recipient of a PhD in sports fitness from his home university in Kiev, in the Ukraine, gets another knockout in his boxing career. Final punch at numbers, total punches, so that it was a slow, tactical fight. Schubert landing only 16 of 190 attempted blows. Vladimir Klitschko landing 58 out of 262. About half of those were jabs and half of them power shots. As you can see, Klitschko landing 40 out of 213 jabs uh, to seven out of 126 for Schuford. Uh, not a high connect percentage on the jab for Klitschko. That's more a function of where Schuford was standing and the respect that he gave to Klitschko than it is of any technical inadequacy on Vladimir's part. When Vladimir got, a chance, got his chance, he did what he had to do. Now let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations. Vladimir, was there anything in this fight that surprised you? Um, before the fight, I know next opponent Charles Schufford. He's a very careful fighter, and it's a very difficult fight against guys who are very careful, it's, and because they don't make a mistakes or make a mistake, but not so loud for a good punch. And uh, it was it was a good experience for me because um, I still was six or seven rounds. And um, I just take a time, step by step, because I have a 12 rounds. That's it. Um, were you surprised at all that the blow that ended the fight finally was almost your first left hook? Um, you know, yes, but not only. <laughs> in the right time. It's a left hook in the right time. And right straight in the right time, too. And uh, it's just independent from the situation. We've noticed over the years in seeing many European uh, uh, heavyweights and fighters that they don't throw left hooks. Did you learn this at a young age as part of your arsenal? Um, I started with the boxing. I was 14 and uh, I learned a lot of things. And uh, my, my very important thing correct my work for the next fighter because it's independent from the fighter style. I changed my style too because all the time fighting with the same style, I think I will be no, never have a result. All right, let's take a look at the knockout blow at the end of the fight. You had knocked him down twice with right hands. Uh, describe what you see. Uh, oh. I'm yes, sorry, that's what this guy. Yeah, it's uh, it's just uh, just a result for the hard work, hard preparation. Because I'm still here in Las Vegas four weeks before the fight, and the preparation was very hard. 
Do you feel that right now you are ready for any heavyweight in the world, or do you feel that you still n need some other fights before that? Oh, it's a good question because I'm ready like last year, and I just um, wait of the big fight against big names, and um, I'm sure it's coming. Thank you very much again. Congratulations, thank Vladimir. You. Jim. All right. Thank you, Larry. And remember that Emmanuel Stewart is still the trainer of Lennox Lewis, who's